educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the July 29th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is tossing at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I. It just passed, well, it's just past 8 o'clock in the morning. So if you are listening live, or if you are listening at the normal time slot, I should say, uh, we'll try to make the show as pertinent as we can. If you are listening live, though, we would love to hear from you. A couple ways of that, you can always give us a call at 877-927-6648. Can't call in. You can always send me an email. Now, send it early. Send it to Steve at TFN.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, inside our Tigers Delaney. And every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got the U.S. equity futures trading the upside. Dow futures up 86 points. NASDAQ futures up 126. ES mini's up 27. Russell's up 7. Over in Asia last night, all the markets closed lower. When I say all the markets, I'm referring to the Shanghai, the Hang Seng, and the Nikkei. Shanghai down 30 points. Uh, we'll go take a look at what that actually means here momentarily. We'll take a look at the international markets, uh, see what they're signaling to you and I. Over in Europe this morning, you've got both the DAX and the FTSE trading the upside. The uh, DAX up one and uh, two tenths percent. 161 points. Gold's up six bucks right now. Silver's up 10 cents. Uh, platinum's up by uh, 10 bucks out there. You've got natural gas up by uh, 19 cents. Lights recruit up 218. Trading out at 98.60. 30 year treasury is uh, off 17 ticks. She trading out at 142.20 out there. US dollar index is uh, back uh, 311 ticks as well, 105.92. So let's do this here. Let's uh, move over. I say move over. Well, actually, let's do this. The, the first thing, let me just give, give you a, really a market overview, and then we'll go take a look at some of the detail type charts out here. But here's our nine panel market update chart, uh, what we typically do uh, for the one and the 2 p.m. update out here. But it just kind of gives us a sense of where things are at. So here, if we take a look at the ES mini, you'll see an A to B equals C and E to the upside. You also see a solid green line, which is the top of its weekly profile, uh, which is the center of its weekly profile. And that's at the 4121.60 level. So that's the next area of resistance. If price can get through that, then price would go target or could target the top of its weekly profile on the 42.77 level. But just know that the ES Mini is trading up in a resistance area. You got that spot volatilex, which is uh, below its 50-day exponential moving average and falling. That uh, puts the wind at the sails of the uh, bulls for the S&P 500. If we take a look at the NQ out here, the NQ, both of them are in A to B equals CD patterns to the upside, and therefore a bearish reversal candle. Uh, would confirm a sell the D point, a Gartley sell point. Short of that, the next price target area for the NQ is the top of its weekly profile. And that's at 13.004. We're trading out at 12.859 right now. The US dollar index closed yesterday below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. It's trading below that today, even though right now it looks like a hammer can. I don't know what it will look like at day's end. But this suggests that price should go target the 103 area. It's bullish structure, got a bullish structured weekly profile that formed this week. And that uh, bullish structure says uh, 103.17 to 103.91 could be the price target. Goldilocks trading right up into resistance, the resistance of the top of its daily profile and the bottom of its week. I take that back. The bottom of its, the top of its daily and top of its weekly. It's a new profile that formed this week. Both of them are at the 1778 level. 
So prices found support or resistance there. In the case of silver, if silver is able to close above 1986, had a great day yesterday, but if price can close above 19.868 to be exact out here, that is going to generate a change in trend signal for the weekly time frame. Light Sweet Crude has two buy the D points or two Gartley buy patterns out there, but all that's really led to is a consolidation with inside its daily profile. That's between the range of 90.98 to 102 even Steven. Natural gas um, is, uh, we've got the September contract up. It, what, what this doesn't show is that price ran into resistance at its TD9 count breakdown level. That's okay. We don't even have to see that. We can see that price ran into resistance at a prior high out here, the one from June the 8th. Uh, price right now is testing a potential level of support, the top of its profile, 820. If price closes below that level, that's going to suggest a further move to the downside. In case of the 30-year Treasury, she's traded above both the top of its daily and weekly profiles out there. Uh, so that looks uh, bullish. Now, what I can't recall off the top of my head if there's any kind of TD9 count uh, pattern out there or not. But we'll take a look at that. Hopefully, we'll take a look at that. So this kind of gives us an overview as to what we're looking at in the general markets. Um, let's go now take a look at what the international markets are communicating to us. So if you give me a moment, we'll get over to there. I had everything set up and my computer froze up just before we came on the air. You know how things are happening for us. So all that will do is just simply slow things down just a uh, bit. Just a bit. And uh, sorry about that. So let me get over to these markets. Let's change the uh, panels out here. Uh we go and so momentarily what you'll see in the episode this is this is kind of the overview of what took place overseas uh what is uh going on in the uh, currency market so the shanghai is in the upper left hand corner what you'll notice about the shanghai is it formed a nice td9 count bottom and actually formed that on july 15th it was uh, confirmed the following day and when you get a confirmed top or bottom what price will typically do is go target its oscillator and change line that's exactly what took place yesterday and today now it's green um, so it's not as bearish as if it were a red oscillator and change line. But the oscillator and change line acts as support or resistance or can act as support or resistance out here. And right now, you can clearly see it's working as magic at resistance. So if price did trade back inside that swing point that created that TD9 count, that uh, July 15th area. And so price may be targeting that level. If price did close below that level, that level is 3382.68. Then that would suggest a run for the 3272 area. That's its breakout area. Shanghai has got a confirmed Rojmant indicator top. There's a confirmed TD9 count top in the Hang Seng. And the Hang Seng today took out its TD9 count bottom that it formed on July 15th as well. That suggests that the Hang Seng is going to make its way back to its uh, May low. That's anywhere between the range of 19,973 to 2320. The Nikkei out here continues to find resistance. It's got an A to B equals CD to the upside. You can see that visually out there. There's no bearish reversal candle, and it has resistance at 28.044. The DAX, I'll just simply open this up, has been trading in a very large consolidation pattern. Actually, I'll open it up and pull it back so you can see that. Uh, price, uh, in fact, what the DAX is uh, potentially doing today, it would require a close above 13,399.40, near 13,440 right now. That would be, or could be confirming an A to B equals CD to the upside, which would then signal to you and I what the DAX wants to do is make its way up to the top of the consolidation. That's in the 14,692, right now again trading out to 13,439 area. The FTSE though, is going to complete a TD9 count top today. So whatever today's high is, if price closes above that on a Sunday, Monday morning, well, really be Monday morning out there, that'll negate that signal and tell us the price is going to move up to its TD9 count breakdown area of 76.17. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Monk Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. 
This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar, dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We are recording the show between 8 and 9. It's 8, 18 in the morning. Good morning to everybody out there. And uh, we were just taking a look at what was going on overnight in the international markets. I was about to get to the uh, currency area. So let's take a look at the uh, currencies that make up the U.S. dollar baskets. This uh, this six currencies here and see what they're signaling to us. So we take a look at the euro. Uh, the euro formed a nice, that's the upper left-hand panel chart, formed a nice roads momentum indicator bottom. And that has basically led to what has been a sideways move over the past uh, couple of weeks out there. So resistance is basically in the uh, dollar two-ish area, support being its uh, oscillator and change line out there. So just a sideways move. That gives us a ton of information out there other than that. The uh, Japanese yen uh, yesterday closed below its breakout level, 134.95. But today is going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count. This suggests that the yen should form a TD9 count bottom between today and next Tuesday out there. Now, you've got to get to bar number nine. So that has to complete at least on uh, Monday out there. But it does look like the uh, yen is getting ready to um, uh, form a bottom and then uh, continue to move higher, which would weaken the uh, yen and strengthen the U.S. dollar index. If we take a look at the Great British Pound, it is going to complete a TD9 count top today. This is the bar following bar number nine. The high of this pattern right now, and I don't know what it will be at the end of the day, but right now it's 1.2246 out there. And therefore, if on Sunday and Monday uh, morning we start to see price trade above that high, that's going to suggest it's going to negate that pattern, head up to resistance at 123. More likely than not, that's not what the outcome is going to be. And the Great British Pound will start to weaken and head back towards its oscillator and change line at the buck 19 level. If we look at the Canadian dollar, today is going to complete a TD9 count bottom there. That suggests the Canadian dollar, which is trading out at 128 right now, should have to the 129.06 level, that green oscillator and change line. If price can close above that resistance level, then price would go target its breakdown area at 130. If we take a look at the... Uh, at the uh, Swiss, uh, at the uh, Corona out there, the Corona has got a nice TD9 count top, and it appears that price will pull back to the 1003 level, its TD9 count breakout level. And on the Swiss franc out here, the Swiss franc yesterday completed a TD9 count bottom. 
And if price were to close below that low, which is 0.9544, and right now you're just above that, um, if price closes below that, it, su it suggests lower price. If price closes above that low, it suggests run to point the asset or change line at 0.9642 as we speak. So all of these are the currency pairs that go into the makeup of the U.S. dollar index. In the case of the U.S. dollar index, you can see a nice Rogeman indicator top. Price is below the bottom of its daily profile. This could be three consecutive days. Yesterday was two consecutive days. This is suggesting to you and I that price wants to make a move to 103.50. But really, we've got to be paying attention to what's going on inside the euro, the pound, the yen, primarily because they make up uh, the uh, bulk of what goes on inside the U.S. dollar index. So that's the currency pairs that are out there. So now let's go from this. We don't have any questions in the queue, uh, not at least that I know of at this stage. I don't have anything by email. Let me just make one check, yeah. And nothing inside the Tiger's Den. So let's go take a look at, let's take a look at the NQ out here right now. So let's get over to its charts. And the question should be, or the question might be, where is price at a dual? First, if we look at the monthly time frame chart, last month we saw price close below its break a level of 12,209. Today is the end of the month. And our price is going to get back above that area. So we don't have a confirmed real breakdown on a monthly basis inside of the NQ. If we did, we'd say price would go target 73,49. The weekly time frame? It's got that nice Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. It's got a uh, TD9 count bottom. And this is going to be week number two, so two consecutive week rally out there. Now, what you and I know is counter trend rallies inside the market typically last two to three bars or two to three weeks in this instance out there. On a daily time frame, you've got now what the weekly time frame chart is telling us is that price wants to go target its TD9 count breakout le breakdown level at the 14,412 level. The daily time frame, although not drawn in here, it's got an A to B equals CD to the upside. That says that any bearish reversal candle would confirm a uh, Gartley sell pattern. And because the oscillator and change line has changed colors, that would become a price target. We don't have that signal as we speak. If we look at the 30 minute chart, all we see is a sideways movement, so no signal there. Nothing on the 60 minute time frame, nothing on the 120 minute time frame, and nothing on the 240. But voila, we get to the five hour time frame chart. And last night at the close, we got a TD nine count top, and that has not been taken out. What that suggests that price will pull back to its oscillator and change line. Now that may be the pullback, that may be the buy the dip point today. That would likely be the diet by the dip point today. Of course, as prices point back to 12,746, you'd like to see some type of bottoming signals on the intraday charts here. No, you can use a 15 minute chart, the 30 minute, I'd say the 15 to 30, maybe the 10 minute chart, you'd want to see that uh, taking place there. If we don't see a bottom signal, it's not that price can't hold support there, it just becomes a little suspect. And if price did close below 12,746, then you'd be looking at a move to either 12,640 or even down to the 12,490 level. But one thing at a time, a price first needs to make its way back that green oscillator and change line on the five hour time frame chart to signal to us what it wants to do. Now, what is the NQ doing longer term out there? Well, we mentioned the two week, uh, we mentioned the two week rally. Is that gonna be the end of it? Well, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, well, and we're going into window dressing. So one would think, that at least the early part of next week, the market should trade higher. Don't know whether they will. And maybe what we're going to get is that three-week rally instead of a two-week rally out there. But I, we can't be surprised if we do only get a two-week rally and then a pullback. Do I think this is the end of the move out there? I do not. I think this move goes. I think this move goes on for two to three months. But that doesn't mean it goes two to three months straight to the upside out there. That's not what I've ever said, or that's to make clear, that is not what I'm saying. Now, if we take a look at some other areas of resistance out here, I was drawing these patterns in this morning for uh, subscribers, and then I had to just shut down the system altogether. We can take a look at uh, trend line channels. And a trend line channel, I'm just using the tops of the candle and the uh, bottom, so those wicks. And here, what I'll do is uh, take this uh, pattern, uh, com complete it out here, so we can uh, have those lines. And then what I'll also do is take the uh, trend lines uh, and this, just turn those two uh, dashes out there. This is similar type work. I believe that Basil does something similar to this. Not, not exactly the same. But there's our trend lines. And now what we can also use are Bud Rolf's channel lines out there. The difference between the channel line and a trend line, at least for Stevie's uh, sake out here, is that the channel lines are using the body of price. And you're looking for at least two, as many co-located opens or closes as you get. You need at least two out there, you know, two to three. And so you could almost say that right now, if I just leave it there, come back here. We gotta, I'll try to come back here. Uh, darn it. That's okay. It's close enough for, 
for my work. And let me complete this here. So that when I say complete this, what I mean is uh, move the lines both back to the upper left and lower right out there. And uh, so here becomes really our range of where price is likely or where the next area of real resistance is at. So remember, I did mention on a weekly basis where the eventual price target may be the 14,412 level. That's the TD9 count breakdown area. Well, before price can get through that, price on a weekly basis is going to need to take out these uh, channel lines or these trend lines out there. So right now we can see that today price has really got uh, uh, you've got at least three connections along that solid blue line out there. So if price does close above this, then that suggests that price move up to that dash line out there. And you can draw that trend line on your charts as well for the weekly NQ chart. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We are recording the show early. It's 826 in the morning. Good morning to everybody. And of course, if you're listening at 126 in the afternoon, good afternoon. And thanks for listening. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, DXAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. 8.29 in the morning. If you're listening in at the normal time slot, thanks so much for doing that. Right now, you got Dow Equity Futures up 45 points. Uh, NASDAQ's up about 84. Well, that just took a quick dive. Uh, 18 points to the uh, to the upside for the ES Mini. I guess I should turn on some financial news. I just have uh, golf on, I think, in the uh, background. In any event, uh, so we've got a question. Uh, inside the Tigers, then two questions. One to take a look at Apple, one to take a look at Tixon, well, I see UI. So let's take a look at Apple right now. And the question is, uh, could we take a look at some upside targets for Apple? So first of all, uh, if we just take a look at the daily time frame chart, the left-hand side out here, we've got A to B equals C, the up pattern. Price did close yesterday and the day before above the top of its daily profile. That's a bullish signal, it says we should head higher. Now, if we get any type of bearish reversal candle out here, Bogart dog, 
uh, that's going to confirm a Gartley sell pattern. And then that would suggest pulling back to at least support. In this case here, the support on the daily time frame for Apple is 156.28 below that. The oscillator changed on at 150, about 152. Upside target from a daily standpoint, short of uh, getting a bearish reversal candle, would be 178.49. That's its TD9 count breakdown area. So that's coming from the daily time frame. The weekly time frame out here, uh, which has a nice uh, TD9 count bottom, uh, beautiful pattern out here. Uh, what this is suggesting to you and I is price is a really wide range uh, market profile and it's bearish in structure. So the resistance zone or where the sellers are located for the intermediate term time frame are between 163.75 and 167.64. And even if pricing it above that, then it has resistance at 171.53. So I would say at this stage here, and if we look at the uh, monthly time frame chart, uh, what you can see is that the top of its monthly profile price is going to close or should close above the center of its bullish structured monthly profile. This suggests that price wants to make a run for the top of that profile. And that's at the 168.79 level. I believe that's it. Let me make sure. Yeah, 168.79. So the upside price targets, you got 168.79 on the monthly. You basically got about 167.64 for the weekly. You're at 178 for the daily out there. That really becomes the upside uh, price target. Uh, like we did on the NQ, I just simply went to the weekly chart and created the uh, channel lines out there. Um, so that gets us up into that uh, range of that 167 uh, level as well. Is that the extent of the uh, bounce inside Apple? I don't know. We have to take things, take things one moment at a one day at a time, really, as uh, information is released to us. But right now, uh, the price target's up in that 167-ish area. So I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, Apple. Dan wanted to take a look at ticker, ticker symbol ICUI. And ICUI, let's uh, we'll get this here updated momentarily. And ICUI is what? ICUI is, uh, is on my screen. Is uh, ICU Medical. Okay. So as we take a look at ICU Medical, quite a, a move yesterday, uh, but that uh, move was nothing more than a test and rejection of its oscillator and change line. Red oscillator and change line. And end up closing back above the top of its daily profile. So, Dan, you've got a nice Rhodes Mintum indicator and TD9 count bottom that formed out here on June the 16th. You're in an A to B equals C to the upside pattern. What we don't have here is any kind of bearish reversal candle. So this suggests, and you're above the top of the daily profile, this suggests to me that price wants to go target its TD9 count breakdown area at 183.58. So that's the first signal. The weekly time frame chart, and a nice spotting to you on, uh, on uh, this uh, instrument here. You've also got a weekly, oh, you're looking to get long. Okay. So this also has a weekly TD9 count bottom. So, hey, good spotting regardless uh, because you've got a nice daily bottom. You've got a nice weekly bottom. And on the monthly side, what you have here is price pulling back and testing support, which is the bottom of its monthly profile at the 159.97 level. Can't bust them down, right? So price should try to bust on the upside. So let's go back from now from right to left. On the right side, which is the monthly chart, suggests to move up to the 205 level. Okay. If you look at the weekly time frame chart, because price had been below the bottom of its weekly bearish uh, bullish structured profile, Dan, you know the play out here. If price can close above 180.75 on a weekly time frame, then that suggests that this is not a counter trend move. It's something other than a counter trend move out there. But if price runs up to 180.75, backs off, maybe that's taking place while uh, there's some kind of pattern, maybe the confirmed uh, sell the D point on the daily time frame. That would then suggest that price is gonna pull back, and so you'd wanna really be patient and wait on that. Um, and so we really won't get that release of information until we see how price deals with 180.75, but knowing you got this A to B equals CD pattern and resistance on the daily at 183.58, it may take a little while for that pattern to uh, form, to pull back. So you say 205 is my thought too, as far as where things would head to, 205, yeah. So I'm with you there, but hopefully you also then see, you know, the 180, that 180.75. I mean, you know, that that's that's really the that's really the that's really the concern here at the uh, at the moment. So that's what I see. Looks good. So I mean, longer term, you gotta like it. Daily bottom, weekly bottom, monthly price holding support. So uh, kudos to you. You know, I guess we'd really have to go down to some intraday time periods too. But I'm just concerned about that 180.75. Maybe I'm a nervous Nelly. 
or something along those lines. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the uh, request out there. Uh, no other requests at this stage of the uh, game. So let's go take a look at uh, let's go take a look at the medals. To do that, what do we want to do? Let's go take let me get the uh, gold charts here going. They'll populate here momentarily. Or maybe I did. Oh, I already opened them up. Great. Okay. So here's our multi time frame set of charts for gold. So what you're going to notice right now is you've got a uh, monthly hammer candle. The month ends today. Or is gold trading? Hold on a second. When, when is the actual end of the month? Sunday. Uh, so, um, well, what we've got right now with regard to gold, really gold, if we look at the monthly chart, what really should stick out to each of us is just simply the consolidation pattern or the range. And the range for gold is between 1706 and 2025 out there. So from a monthly standpoint, you know, we'll just simply call it nothing more than price consolidating with inside that range. It's tested the bottom. Now price should go target that oscillator and change line, 1898. Because it's green, if price were to close above that level, that suggests you get up to 2025. The weekly time frame chart shows we've got a uh, confirmed by the D point pattern. That was confirmed uh, last week with that uh, bullish piercing candle out here. A price was also testing its breakout level at 1676.50. Oscillator and change on has changed colors. This really suggests a price target of at least 1807. If price can get above 1807, then its next real resistance band is between 1826 and 1850. If price can clear 1850, that's what gets us to the 1898, 2025, 1959 area. If you look at the daily time frame chart, gold has a nice TD9 count bottom. It has a buy the D point bottom. That was formed with that bullish engulfing candle from about uh, five, six, seven trading sessions ago. Yesterday, price closed above the top of its daily profile. Right now, price is trading above. Now, I've got different profiles with my different systems out here. Uh, but right now, if we take a look at the white background charts, you're in bar number seven. This suggests that price wants to go target 1868.50. It does say that you could get a TD9 count top that would form between Monday and Wednesday of next week, but we'll take that when we get there. The 30 minute chart with regard to gold, has a nice uh, Rhodes Mintum indicator top, and price is testing support. So for the day, or for right now, we can see that price is pulling back to a key level of support. That's at 1771.90. If we see a 30-minute close below that level, now at 1.38 in the afternoon, you're going to know whether the price trade below 1771.90 or not. Uh, but if price does close below that, that suggests lower price. Otherwise, for the day, price might be just pulling back to test the only level. Well, can't be the only level of support. If I look at a 60-minute chart, I've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. And support is way down there, 1734. The 120-minute chart's got a TD9 count top. The 240's got a TD9 count top. But the five-hour chart says, I don't know about that TD9 count stuff. I want to move to higher ground. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 
1-800-227-5523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the inventor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our next question. Yeah, actually, the only question that we've got uh, in the uh, queue as we speak right now, though, I want to confirm that. Uh, yeah, that is the uh, case. And it's about the SMH. It comes from SNP inside the Tiger's Den. And SNP is asking, where's support in the SMH on the daily time frame? So right now you got the SMH's last trade fired up at 233. And the top of its daily profile, which price closed above yesterday as well as the day before, which is, and, and the day before's close negated its uh, sell the D point pattern that had formed uh, last uh, Friday out there. So that suggests that price should go target 243.70. So the question was, where is support on a daily basis? The first level of support will be the top of its daily profile, 232.14. Because we have two consecutive closes above the top of a bearish structured daily profile SNP, if price were to pull back below that level, a counter trend move to the downside would or should find support at 225.59. And we can also see below that is the oscillator change line. That's currently printed at 220.52. So if everything is okay with the SMHs, they should really hold the 225.59 level, and they should make their way up to the 243.70 area. However, if we look at the weekly time frame chart, I put in both the descending trend lines. Those would be uh, by the dash levels and the solid lines of the channel lines. Again, channel lines where we're looking at the body of the candle. That's what we're looking for two to three or as many co-located opens and closes of those candles to draw the channel lines. Uh, we can see that from a trend line standpoint, a uh, price is uh, right on it. So it's right at a resistance level. But if price can continue to motor on and close above this area, um, of course the question would be where on the weekly basis would we find the next price target area? And I'd say it hasn't been revealed to us. What I mean by that is price is above the top of its weekly profile. I don't have any kind of TD9 counts or anything out here for it. So uh, we'd really have to go to a different uh, chart to figure out if price is able to take out this descending trend line, where is it headed to? Well, we already factored that or answered that question. We looked at the daily chart, right? 243.70. But if price takes out 243.70, then where it's, is it headed to? Well, 246.42. So we're going to flip this around. So we said on the daily time frame, because it was a bearish structured profile, any counter trend move should find support at the center of that level, which is the 225.59 area. In the SMHs, where if this is just a counter trend move, which I suspect that it is, where price will find resistance at 246.42. Now, if price can close above 246.42, that's the center of its monthly bullish structured profile. If price is able to close above that, then you're looking at a run to the top of the profile, 264, or its oscillator and change line, which is above that level at the 272 area. So SNP, I hope that helps you out with regard to what the SMHs are doing. Uh, where your support areas are on the uh, daily time frame. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, what do we have that is moving inside the uh, markets uh, here today? Let me see here. 
MUSA close at 287. That's still trading at 287. So that's not uh, my screen's not uh, updated. Okay, so what do we want to look at next? We took a look at gold. We took a look at. Uh, let's go take a look at the uh, ES Mini. Um, so let's go do that because obviously a very popular instrument to uh, trade out here. So let's look at its charts. When we take a look at the ES Mini charts, here's what we know. Let's start with the longer term, the monthly chart. You've got a nice TD9 count top out there. And voila, what price did last month was tested and rejected its breakout level of 36.78. Now, the cool thing about the TD, there's several cool things about the TD9 count pattern. One, everybody, it's easy to learn. Even if you're not a technician, this one is an easy tool to learn, and, and you can document it on your charts manually, certainly for your longer-term time periods, your daily, your weekly, your monthly. Very easy to go ahead and document. And I teach you how to do that. Just subscribe to Mastering Probability. If you do it for 29 days, it doesn't cost you anything. You get education worth, uh, well, uh, worth more than, uh, uh, more than what you would pay for. So, you know, consider doing that. That what I was going to say with regard to that 3678, so the powerful aspect is that it helps us to identify when price might be topping or bottoming out there, but that TD9 come. It also sets up that breakdown objectively, a breakout in a breakdown area. And, and this is the thing that it, it, it's not like it amazes me, but it does amaze me. It's, you know, how the power of these nines out here, power of this pattern is that no one with inside TFNN, and probably no one listening, other than if you trade uh, TD9s or you, you apply that indicator uh, to your uh, charts out there, um, would have chosen 36.7825 as a breakout level. Yet look at what price did last month. That is where it found support. And we can answer why it found support there. So really helpful. Now, if we look at the weekly time frame chart here, we'll see that uh, we've got a confirmed road momentum indicator bottom. We've got a confirmed by the D point uh, pattern. Price above its oscillator and change line. Let's do this here. Let's do really the same thing. Let's just simply draw in those uh, trend lines, those channel lines out here, just to kind of give us a feel for where it's at with regard to. So here, let's draw in the. Uh, this is what I would. Yeah, I'd say this is this is the going to be the trend line out there. So let's get that going. Uh, right about there. Let's go ahead and put some dashes. So that's going to be one level. And uh, a moment here. Get this rolling. And then we're going to put in the second level, which is going to be the uh, channel, the channel lines. Again, on the channel lines, the difference is we're using the, uh, on trend lines, we're using the uh, top or bottom of the uh, wick. And on uh, channel lines, we're actually using the uh, body of the uh, candle out there. So there's our trend line. Now we draw the channel lines in here. A moment to do that. Again, we're using the, the, the body of the candle out there. We're looking for at least two or three so I'm going to say that that's, that's pretty much uh, it uh, from this side. And here I've just got to do some guessing. I come back in and draw the bottom line. But right now what we're interested in is where is the resistance areas out here. So let's go ahead and uh, just simply complete this pattern and to give you where those price targets are. So on a weekly basis, what the ES Mini may be doing is targeting that trend or channel line. The channel line resistance is in about the 4225-ish type area. And then the trend line is up at the 4360 range. Now, this weekly chart, I don't have anything in here that uh, uh, I don't have profiles because I've got the continuous contract that is uh, being uh, shown here. So I don't have those in there. But that's likely where price is headed to. Now, when we look at the daily time frame chart, we don't have any kind of a topping pattern. We don't have a TD9 count. We do have an A to B equals CD that's underway. Uh, the next price projection for the A to B equals CD pattern for the ES Mini 41.19 is the 1 to 1.272 <clears throat> A to B equals CDF. The next area, if price can clear that, is at uh, 42.26. 42.26, I think, uh, kind of got us up towards those trend line areas as well. And 42.26 would be the 1.618 A to B equals CD. 1.618, what I mean is you take the measure of the A to B line, you multiply that times 1.618, add that to the C point. That's what gives you that price objective of 42.27 out there. Now, with regard to the intraday charts out here, it's really the five-hour chart that, uh, well, let me put this back here. The five-hour chart that's got that nice TD9 count top. When you get a top, typically what we see is price pull back to a oscillator and change line. So this is suggesting we could see the ES Mini pull back into the 4067 level. Now, that could be, if price does do that during the day, that could be the next buy the dip area out there. 
and the price closes below that, that says we head lower, lower to where. Well, it's a green oscillator and change line. It says that we continue to retrace out there. What I would then look for is some type of intraday pattern to say that the move lower on the five hour chart would be over. But right now, let's not be surprised if we see price pull back in the ES mini to the 4067 level. Of course, you take out last night's high, the high at five o'clock, you're off to the races to the upside. See you with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, it is uh, about 8.54 in the morning. If you're listening live, thanks so much for doing that. We'll be back to normal programming on uh, Monday. and uh, uh, But let's do this here. Uh, I know that Larry's been off. He's dealing with a sore throat or something along those lines out there. And so let me cover some of the soft commodities as we just simply go into the uh, today's, uh, into the close of the show. So as we take a look here, we've got uh, wheat in the upper left-hand side. As we take a look at uh, wheat, wheat should go target the 870.45 level. It's got a nice uh, wave number seven bottom. It's got a roads momentum indicator bottom out there. If we take a look at November beans, November beans uh, have a nice roads momentum indicator bottom. That was confirmed with this gap to the upside on July 26. Uh, price should go target the top of its uh, profile out there, and that's at the uh, 1487 level. I don't know why my system's not picking up where it's actually trading right now. It's actually at the 1466 level. So 1487, you get a close about 1487, that says we head back to its highs, resistance will have been taken out. And I'm referring to the highs back in uh, June. If we look at December corn, December corn, 
is trading above the uh, top of its daily profile. That suggests that price should go target its most recent swing point out there. That is from the uh, trading day of July 11th, and that is in the 658, 626 level out there. So that's where corn is headed to. If you look at coffee, coffee's just been consolidated with inside its daily profile. That's between the range of 197.51 and 220.79. If we look at uh, sugar, sugar needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a rodentum indicator uh, bottom pattern out here. Right now, what price has done, it's tested and rejected. It's uh, descending uh, trend line out here. And so that suggests a retest of the uh, lows. And if we take a look at coffee, uh, coffee is just consolidating with inside. Its daily profile right now it does have a nice Rosemontum indicator bottom pattern. So let's finish this off. Let's go back and take a look at the uh, five-hour charts. Let me see if I can get those up here on uh, the uh, screen. Let's get the uh, five-hour charts. <laughs> And as we take a look at the uh, five-hour charts, these are the ones where we've got the TD9 counts across the board, whether it's the ES Mini, the NQ, the YM, and the Russell 2000. As long as those patterns remain in effect, what price should do is pull back to their respective oscillator and change line areas. 4067 for the ES, about 1277.45 for the NQ. The Dow would be about 32,419, and the Russell 1867. So, folks, thanks so much for joining me early on a Friday morning. Have a fantastic weekend. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you Monday, 1 o'clock sharp. Stay tuned. Your favorite uh, polar bears up next if you're listening to the 1 o'clock show. And Tommy O'Brien with the Morning Market Kickup. He'll be up next if you're listening at 9 a.m. Take care, folks.